Thank you, Debbie, for the opportunity to uh, make a presentation to the Master Gardeners meeting this evening. Uh, and thank you for that introduction. So yes, I am Joel Metzger. I'm the general manager of Utica Water and Power Authority. Uh, we're headquartered here in Angels Camp. And uh, I'll talk about the services that we provide and the, the water that we bring down the hill for our communities. Uh, but before I get into the presentation, I just wanted to give folks just a little bit more background about myself. I am a local uh, here in Calaveras County. Um, I was born in Sonora and raised in San Andreas. And uh, my dad, Randy Metzger, was the longtime Calaveras County assessor. Um, so we were involved with the county and got familiar with, with how local government works as a, a young man. I went off and got a degree from Sonoma State University in political science, and I came back to spend what I thought was the summer before starting the law internship in San Andreas, and I got an offer to do an internship at the Calaveras Enterprise newspaper, and I decided to take that, and that was kind of a life-changing event for me. I, I fell in love with journalism, and uh, I spent the next six years working my way up from the new cub reporter at the newsroom all the way up to the editor of the newspaper and, and leading that company. And after six years there, I made a major career change to start working in for the Calaveras County Water District, which is the largest water district in Calaveras County, has about 21,000 people uh, that it serves throughout all parts of the county. And I was hired as a manager there um, and worked my way up into the top level management, uh, working directly with the general manager, uh, working on things like grants, uh, legislative advocacy in Sacramento and Washington DC, and uh, public relations and external affairs there. And so after six years there, I guess six years is the magic number for me, okay. I uh, ended up applying to be the general manager of Utica Water and Power Authority. And after a, a long selection process and interview process, uh, the board did hire me uh, to be GM for the first time uh, uh, for in my career. And so I'm, I'm very honored to have been chosen for this position. And I've been in the position for about seven months now. Mm -hmm. And it's a very steep learning curve because Utica doesn't just have water, it also has two hydroelectric power plants. Mm -hmm. And so I had to become well-versed in California power markets and power sales and uh, maintaining those uh, pieces of equipment. So that's a little bit about me. Uh, outside of work, I love to hike and bike and uh, go throughout the county uh, with my fa family, my beautiful wife, Emily, and my daughter, Kate. We live in Vallecito, and we love living in, in this community, and we plan to stay here and, and make our life here um, along the Highway 4 corridor. It's a, a beautiful place to live. So with that, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about Utica, and since this is a Calaveras and Tuolumne group, I did throw some slides in on Tuolumne County as well. Uh, but please uh, show me some grace on the Tuolumne side. I'm not nearly as familiar with what's going on over there as what we have going on in Calaveras County. So there are a few things that I, I hope that you'll take away from the presentation. And um, I just hope you know who we are, what we do, a little bit about Tuolumne and, and its historic ditch system as well. Uh, the history of Utica, where the water comes from for both counties, where does it go? and some of the challenges that we as small agencies in the foothills face. And then the final thing I, I wanna leave you with is what the community can do to protect uh, or obtain, in Tuolumne's case, water rights. So uh, UWPA is a joint powers authority, it's a JPA. It was formed in 1996, so we're relatively young as a JPA. And our main responsibility is to bring 33,000 plus acre feet of water from the North Fork Stanislaus River down the hill to provide uh, raw water, untreated water to Murphy's, Angels Camp and surrounding communities. There are 10 people who work for our organization and we maintain five reservoirs with dams holding the water back, uh, 27 miles of flumes um, and ditches between Avery and uh, Angels Camp. And then the two hydroelectric plants that I referenced. And um, our partners in the JPA is the Union Public Utility District, which serves uh, Murphy's and the surrounding areas, and the city of Angels Camp. And uh, uh, this water that we provide is uh, used beneficially 
uh, for residential, commercial, agricultural uses throughout our community. So I, I just wanted to give you a visual on, I just said we, we moved 33,000 acre feet of water. So you may have seen New Maloney's Reservoir has 2.4 million acre feet. Well, what does that mean? So an acre foot of water is uh, an acre of land covered with one foot of water. So if you look at the football field on this screen, uh, picture not the whole football field, but I'd say 90% of it covered with an acre foot of water. So uh, if you apply that to Utica, we're bringing 33,000 football fields covered with one foot of water down the hill each year. And uh, in terms of how that relates to a, a standard family, a family of four uh, that's using water responsibly generally uses about one acre foot of water a year. But as we have uh, seen conservation measures implemented like low flow toilets and better irrigation, uh, drip systems versus flood and sprinkler, and uh, all, all the, the smart technology that's used now, uh, we're seeing more and more families be able to uh, survive on an acre foot, not just one. So soon, you know, we'll have two or three families uh, using an acre foot each year. <coughs> so the UWPA system map, this is a, a high level overview. Uh, what you're looking at here is uh, kind of the Highway 4 corridor uh, going all the way up to the high country. So if you look at the top right of your map, you'll see uh, Lake Alpine, Utica and Union Reservoirs, and then a New Spicer Reservoir. And these are all along the North Fork Stanislaus watershed. And that's where our water comes from, is the North Fork, North Fork Stanislaus. And I'll, I'll get into that a little bit more. Um, and I'm gonna tell you how that water makes its way down to our system, because it's actually a really fascinating uh, system with some really incredible infrastructure that was built in the last 30 years that I'm excited to share with you. And so uh, we picked that water up in Avery and we move it all the way down along that green line that you see on the screen, um, all the way down to, to Angel's Camp. And then that water is released into uh, New Maloney's Reservoir and out it goes to the San Joaquin River and the Delta and eventually the, the San Francisco Bay. So that's us. Now I just wanna give you a little overview. Uh, we're not the only ditch in, in the region. Uh, TUD also has some ditch system. So I just kind of thought it'd be fun to compare the two. So we have 27 miles of, of ditch and flume. TUD has 74 miles uh, of ditch and conveyance system. Um, 56 miles of that is ditch, the rest is flume. So they have a bigger system than we do in Tuolumne. Uh, they serve all kinds of um, raw water uh, treatment plants, which then they, they treat and provide to residential and, and uh, commercial customers. And they have a lot more uh, ag customers off the ditch than we do. We only have 15. They have many, many more than that. A uh, little map for you, uh, just like I showed you of Calaveras, you can see the main ditch is green on the top coming down. And then the red ditches are the, the um, spar ditches that come off and provide that raw water throughout much of Tuolumne County. And I, so here's, here's my uh, first quiz for you. Um, I have two red circles here. I think you might be, have a hint on the top red circle, but can anybody identify what that reservoir is that's circled on, on top of the screen? Lions. 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 Lions Reservoir. Okay, so I'm, I'm hearing lions. Lions yeah. is the one in the middle of the screen. It's the smaller yeah. of the two. So that's okay. lions. And then if you look to the top of the screen, that's actually pine crest. Yeah. That's way, right. way up at the top of the system. And so this is where your water in Tuolumne comes from, um, stored in Pinecrest and released. Uh, and I'm also curious if anyone knows what the name of that river is that's bringing that down. Does anybody have a guess on the, the river name? Tuolumne. So that's the South Fork of the Stanislaus River. Very good. And we get our water over here in Calaveras from the North Fork of the Stanislaus. So both counties are drinking uh, from different tributaries of the same river. So uh, in Tuolumne, Lions Lake, you just named that very well. Uh, here's a picture of what that looks like. And uh, it's <laughs> spilling in this case. And then the diversions into the flume, the main flume and canal, uh, this is Lions Dam. And then you can see the flume is going right off of that diversion point at the base of the dam. So that's the beginning of Tuolumne's uh, water system. And uh, this is just a little bit more information about the Tuolumne side. 
uh, the canals, the flumes. Um, interestingly enough, PG&E is still maintaining and operating that main canal. Uh, so that's a, a benefit to Tuolumne County right now in terms of maintenance. But the downside, and I think your uh, Tuolumne County has, has had a lot of um, publicity about this lately, is that Tuolumne doesn't have any water rights. And there is a kind of an attempt being made to uh, purchase the PG&E system, or at least a portion of it. And I'm sure you know more about this than I do. Uh, but the idea would be to actually own some water rights and not rely on, on PG&E to continue that relationship that uh, has been in place for many years. And, and for those who may not know, um, the water rights that Tuolumne County had were sold many, many years ago. Uh, and it's not just the Stanislaus River that goes through Tuolumne County. There's also the Tuolumne River, uh, which famously runs through portions of Yosemite and uh, much of that water goes down to San Francisco since they right. built it on Hetch Hetchy Reservoir and then you also have uh, some of the downstream uh, irrigation districts um, taking water from Don Pedro as well and so Tuolumne really um, didn't protect its water rights many many years ago uh, Calaveras on the other hand did and we have substantial very senior very uh, strong water rights that we can rely on. Just a little bit more about TUD, um, 594 water connections to R15. So substantially more agricultural water available in Tuolumne County than in Calaveras. Uh, they spend a lot of time tending these ditches and flumes. And uh, those guys walk about five to 20 miles a day. We walk many miles as well, but not that much. Right. And then what did it, what did it look like um, in the past? Uh, why were these ditches and flumes built? What well, was all about mining? in all these counties in the, in the Western uh, Sierra foothills. Uh, Columbia was, was, as you all know, a, a massive mining uh, mecca at one time. And some of these old drawings of what the flumes used to look like um, are pretty impressive. Uh, I should say, for those who don't know what a flume is, a flume is a, a wooden structure or metal structure that's usually crossing a gorge or a draw or a rocky area. And then a ditch is an area uh, where you can just dig a ditch and run the water. So these systems are made up of flumes and ditches. The more cost effective way to move water is to dig ditches. So you only see flumes when there was really no other option than to build a flume. So that's the TUD side. Again, forgive me, um, that's not my expertise, but I, I do know the folks at TUD and I, I tried to pay attention in general to understand a little bit about where the water's coming from. Um, so let me hop over to my home turf, which is Calaveras County, and I wanted to talk a little bit about the history of, of Utica's system. This picture is of the old Utica powerhouse. This is made of hand chiseled rhyolite blocks that were mined in the area, and a lot of the old buildings in both counties you can see are made of that beautiful rhyolite, which is a volcanic rock that's very strong and very light. So there are three main chapters in, in our history. Um, going back to 1849, when the, when the gold rush began, um, mining began in this area substantially. And um, they, they eventually, you know, they needed to continue mining throughout the whole year and they didn't have enough water to do so because they, they needed a lot of water. And so it was an, an economic interest for the miners to bring water from more reliable sources. And uh, throughout most of the mining areas, they just had seasonal creeks like Angels and Murphy's Creek. And so the big change was in 1852 when Mill Creek uh, and eventually the, in 1854, the North Fork Stanislaus River, they actually built miles and miles and miles of flumes and ditches to bring that year round water source up out of the Stanislaus River Canyon and into uh, the town of Murphy's and eventually Angels Camp. And so our name, um, really begins as the Union Water Company going back to 1852, um, but it did provide water to the Utica Gold Mine, which was an Angel's Camp. So that's where Utica comes from, is the Utica Gold Mine. And so um, for many, many years, the Union and then eventually the Utica Mining Company owned this system. And it, it transitioned from providing water to miners to um, drinking water and agricultural water. And then in 1946, PG&E purchased the system and PG&E operated that system from 1946 to 1995, 1996 era when they sold it to the Calaveras County Water District. And the Calaveras County Water District at that time 
uh, formed a joint powers authority that included City of Angels and Murphy's and formed UWPA, and they were also in that JPA. And so the current era is from 1996 to present. That's the company that, that I am leading right now. And uh, we're responsible for, for all the remaining infrastructure on the system. So I wanted to just show you a little bit of what it used to look like. So in the 1800s, uh, here's a drawing of one of those raised flumes going across a, a lower valley. This is a picture of a very high flume that was built across Murphy's Grade Road, um, the, what is now Murphy's Grade Road. So this was crossing the canyon where Angels Creek flows through right now. And this is long since collapsed, but it must have been quite a spectacle when it was still oh, standing and, and running water. I wish I could have seen it in person. And that's a, a drawing from 1857. And then this is one of my favorite pictures. This is in the 1890s. Um, I'm not sure if they had just finished the flume they were celebrating or these ladies were just out having a picnic, but they were along this uh, flume section and this was built uh, out on Pennsylvania Gulch Road, which is where Indian Rock Vineyards is, um, just outside of Murphy's. Uh, there's a big valley out there and this was bringing water across that valley. And so this was, must have been a fantastic uh, flume when it was still in existence. This is, uh, was torn down when they rerouted the water supply. Uh, and then this is an example of, you can't dig a ditch there. It's just too rocky, uh, but you need to get the water through. And, and these challenges are usually on the upper uh, reaches of these systems uh, where the Stanislaus River Canyon is very steep and very rocky. And this is a section of our longest flume, which is called three quarter mile flume. And uh, this was in the early 1900s um, when they took this picture. So this has been around for a long, long time. And then here's one of our reservoir dams. This is a, a rock dam that was built by hand uh, by the gold mining companies and the water companies providing them. This is called Ross Reservoir. And this was taken in 1895. And this dam is still in existence today. Um, it did fail twice shortly after being built. And um, it's reported there was some life loss downstream. Uh, but since those two early failures, uh, it has, has held strong. And uh, so we're hoping that that will continue for us. So the picture of the construction of that old Utica powerhouse made out of those rhyolite blocks. And this is still um, visible just, just uh, uphill of Murphy's headed toward uh, Arnold. Um, just when you're leaving town, you can take a right on Old Powerhouse Road. And this building has been converted into a beautiful private home. And it's just stunning. I encourage you to take a drive by if you have an extra couple minutes when you're uh, in the Murphy's area. Um, it's owned by a gentleman named Martin Hubbardy, who is the uh, director of Visitors Bureau in uh, Angels Camp. And this is the interior of that uh, powerhouse. Um, this is when they uh, put some Westinghouse generators in in 1901. So that's the history, a little bit of the history of our system. So what does the present day system look like? The one that we're managing every day. Uh, I love this picture. This is a picture I took at sunset and this is near Hathaway Pines. What you see in the distance is the Stanislaus River Canyon and just the top end of New Maloney's Reservoir in the far distance. So here's the watershed uh, where our water comes from. This is the whole Stanislaus River. This is also where Tuolumne County's uh, water comes from. North Fork, Middle Fork, South Fork of the uh, Stanislaus River. And one interesting fact that I wasn't aware of uh, until I got into water is that if you look at this map here, a lot of the watershed that feeds Calaveras isn't even in Calaveras County. So uh, Spicer Reservoir is this big reservoir you can see. A lot of that is in Tuolumne County. Utica and Union Reservoir are just north of Spicer. They're mostly in Alpine County. And then Lake Alpine at the very top of the map is also in Alpine County. So uh, much of our watershed is out of county, but thankfully it flows into Calaveras County and we take advantage of, of those senior water rights. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful area. The high country reservoirs, Alpine, Utica, Union, and Spicer, great for recreation and some of the best water in the Sierra Nevadas. So this is where it gets interesting. Um, and this is kind of one of those behind the curtains things that I, I don't think many people know. Uh, after the water leaves these reservoirs, it flows into the North Fork Stanislaus River. 
And for many miles, it flows down until it eventually goes through Big Tree State Park. If you've ever been to Big Trees, you can drive past the visitor center down into the canyon. You can actually get down to the river. Beautiful, beautiful drive. But just a couple miles downstream from that bridge where you would cross, there is an on-stream dam. It's called McKay's Point Reservoir. It was the last on-stream dam that was built in California. It's very difficult to do that environmentally these days. And this is basically a massive diversion dam. And circled on the screen here is a massive tunnel intake structure. So 90 plus percent of the flow of the Stanislaus River doesn't make it past this dam. Only a fish flow is released down below that dam. And most of it goes into this tunnel intake structure. And this tunnel is about eight and a half miles long. It's 18 feet in diameter. And it uh, was drilled through solid granite. And the purpose of this tunnel is to feed this water into a power plant called the Collierville Powerhouse. And that's at the end of Camp Nine Road. I don't know if anyone's been out there, but it takes off near Vallecito and it goes many miles along New Maloney's and, and up to the very top end of Maloney's. And there's a 252 megawatt powerhouse. It's the biggest powerhouse in this region by far. Uh, generates about $40 million a year in revenue. And that uh, powerhouse is owned by Calaveras County Water District, but it's operated by Northern California Power Agency. And that's an out of, out of county um, group um, that provides power to places like Silicon Valley. And so uh, about 99% of that revenue, maybe 97% uh, goes out of county to NCPA and, and a very small portion is paid to uh, CCWD. Um, so definitely a lot of resources leaving the county uh, in, in that area. This is a picture of the tunnel itself. Uh, picture a semi truck could easily drive through there at, at 18 feet in diameter. It's an enormous tunnel. So how do we get water from this system? Well, what we do is we have a vertical shaft that's drilled straight down in the Avery area uh, and it taps that tunnel. And since the tunnel is sloping downhill, head pressure is developed and it by gravity pushes water up our tunnel tap, up this pipe that you see and into that concrete structure. And gravity provides us with water that flows out of the structure uh, in the Avery area and into what we call the upper Utica Canal. And before that tunnel was built, which is in the late eighties and early nineties um, to a cost of about $600 million, there was a flume that had to go from Avery all the way up to the top end of McKay's. And that was another nine miles of flume. And so that was able to be abandoned when this tunnel was built. So massive infrastructure savings for us, much more reliable water supply. So the upper canal flows into Hunter's Reservoir, which is in Avery. It fills that up and you can see the flume that uh, we have below there. We release the water in there. And then down that water flows all the way along the lower Utica Canal. Here's a section of ditch. Here's a section of flume. So you can see the difference between the ditch and the flume. This is three quarter mile. This is the most challenging section to repair and replace. Very, very remote location, very difficult to access, very dangerous to work on. And in 2001, the Darby fire completely destroyed this flume when a wildfire burned from uh, the Stanislaus River Canyon up and uh, burned this down to nothing. It was devastating for our community. It took 10 months to rebuild this flume. And from there, the water continues to flow into a reservoir on a hill above Murphy's called the Murphy's Forebay. And then it's released into a penstock, which is a big pipe that leads from a reservoir to a powerhouse. And it turns this turbine right here. This is called a Pelton wheel. And this is something that most people never see, but basically what happens is you can see those pointy things in those housings, those are called needles. The deflectors in their way move back hydraulically. The needles are hydraulically pulled back into the housing so they would disappear. And that allows jets of water to come out around the needles and hit these cups, which is in the center here. That's a seven foot diameter um, Pelton wheel. And so what happens is as those needles pull back and the jets hit that, thousands of feet of uh, head pressure. It spins this thing at an incredible rate of speed and that 
potential energy is converted to mechanical energy, which is then converted into electrical energy and put onto the PG&E grid. And this is our largest powerhouse and our, our main revenue source uh, for Utica. <clears throat> so this powerhouse was built in the 1950s, old components. We need to do a lot of upgrades, lots of deferred infrastructure and maintenance on these systems. Uh, you can see this after bay from the town of Murphy's um, as you're leaving the town of Murphy's heading up the Utica grade, and you'll see the powerhouse tucked in the very back end of it. And from there, we release water uh, out of this after bay, and it goes into Murphy's Creek. And if anyone's been to the town of Murphy's on a hot summer day, the best place to be is down by the park or down by the creek in the Murphy's Park, enjoying some swimming or, you know, just having a drink or a picnic along this creek. But what people don't realize is that without the flume system that I've just described, the flume and ditch system, and Utica maintaining it, this is just a seasonal creek. It would go dry, uh, probably around May, maybe June at the latest, depending on how wet the spring was. And this would just be a dusty, dry stream bed. And that this was the problem for the gold miners. That creek didn't last year round. And so that's why they brought that water back in the 1850s. And that's why we're still bringing it today. And so we actually have a recreational flow built into our permits to operate the system. We make sure that um, this amazing asset to the community is flowing year round. It does flood uh, from time to time, um, but most of that is really outside of UWPA's control. So we're getting close to the end of the system now. So there's another diversion on Angels Creek below Murphy's, and that brings water into what's called the lower um, or the Upper Angels Canal. And so this is the Upper Angels Canal, much smaller than the, the Utica Canal, which is up near Avery above Murphy's. Uh, but it does bring water down to the town of Angels Camp. It goes through the French Gulch Road area, uh, lots of agriculture in this area, lots of irrigated pasture. Uh, goes into one of our larger reservoirs, Ross Reservoir. This is that hand-built stone dam you can see on the left side there. And then it runs down into the Lower Angels Canal and into the Angels Forebay. And this is a reservoir that's on the hill above the town of Angels Camp. If you've ever been on the Murphy's Grade Road, you'll see uh, Rolleri's Rock Yard and Vineyard and Irrigated Pasture. This is kind of right up on the hill above that area. And so from here, we provide the town of Angels Camp with itch water supply, uh, a whole agricultural association called the Dogtown Ditch Ag Users Association. And uh, many, many hundreds of acres are irrigated off of that uh, ditch that goes off. But most of the water goes down this pen stock. Uh, this is uh, Rolleri's irrigated pasture. Uh, Angel's Camp is in the background here. And it goes down this pen stock and drops uh, about 900 feet. And then it um, goes into our powerhouse. And before I show you the powerhouse, this is an aerial of Angel's Camp has the blue dot. And then you can see Douglas Flat. And then Murphy's is just out, out of the screen here. And I've circled all of the areas that are irrigated using UWPA's ditch water. And you can see there are hundreds of acres of irrigation, whether it's vineyards, orchards, irrigated pasture, or just yards. Many people just have a connection uh, directly through uh, their house. And so this is an amazing asset to our community to have this river water uh, all throughout the area. And this is, much of this is provided by Union Public Utility District, who we provide water to, and some by Angels Camp, and then much by uh, UWPA directly. So here's that last powerhouse. This is the smaller of the two. This is the Angels Powerhouse. This is a twin Pelton wheel vertically mounted uh, system, makes about 1.4 megawatts of power, and it was built in the 1940s. And then once we spin those turbines, we release the water out what's called a tail race back into Angels Creek. It runs through downtown Angels Camp. Uh, there's another diversion serving uh, Greenhorn Creek, the golf course. And then anything left, which is the majority of the water, goes into New Maloney's Reservoir and flows downstream into Tulloch and Goodwin, and then eventually San Joaquin River, the Delta, and then the San Francisco Bay. So that is an overview of Utica's system. And uh, many people don't realize how much it takes to make sure that we have a reliable water supply coming down the hill. And this is something that I, as a, a local and a resident who plans to spend my life here and, and leave um, you know, a good, better, better county for my kids, um, these water rights that we have are worth protecting. And um, so that's one thing I, I hope I do leave you with is, 
Water rights are important. They're really one of the most important keys to the future of our communities. And so um, I think understanding what it takes to use those water rights and keep them is really important. So I just wanna share with you um, in the very end of the presentation here, um, keeping these systems going is difficult. Um, you know, 150 year old infrastructure, uh, you need to put a lot of money into replacing and repairing that. Um, it's expensive, it's difficult to maintain these uh, gold rush era systems. And so one of the things as a new general manager is I'm trying to get better at proactively addressing the challenges and not just deferring this maintenance again and again and again. And so that's a big challenge that I'm working on. Additionally, we're under the jurisdiction of FERC, which is the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission, also DSOD, uh, Department of Safety of Dams. Um, after Oroville took place, uh, the disaster at Oroville, uh, the regulations that we're under have just skyrocketed, the fees have skyrocketed. Um, all of the things we need to do to make sure our dams and system are safe are important, but also extremely expensive. So just a, a high level estimate, you know, between 150 and 300,000 a year, just to stay in compliance with FERC and DSOD. So it's extremely expensive and extremely burdensome to go through all of these regulations. Additionally, our system is historical. So SHPO uh, has designated our system as historical because of its gold rush history and roots. And so that limits what we can do in terms of repairs and what we can and can't do. And in some sense, you know, that's a really wonderful thing because this is a piece of history that we wanna preserve. But in another sense, I lose sleep at night because our system burned once before and it's still a wooden system out there. And so I would uh, really like to see a system that would be more resistant to wildfire, whether it be a metal or a concrete construction material. That's something I'm working toward while at the same time preserving the history by documenting it, building replicas, things of that nature. But at some point, um, I, I don't feel like I'm gonna be a responsible GM unless I'm thinking about trying to protect this system from being destroyed once again by wildfire. And here's an example uh, that I shared with you, the Darby fire in 2001, the system was completely destroyed. And this is the, the new system being built on the right-hand side there. Um, so we don't want that to ever happen again. And then, you know, another challenge is the power market um, is getting worse and worse. Um, we as a small hydro, we're green power. We're competing with solar and wind and solar has just exploded in California over the past 10 years. And so our revenues are decreasing year over year because solar is flooding the market and there's way too much supply for demand in many cases. And so um, we're looking for ways to increase revenues wherever we can and make sure that we have enough money to continue existing. And so that's a big challenge. Uh, we have some bright spots where we may get better contracts, but until those are signed and inked, uh, we're not counting, counting on anything right now. But it's important people know that as great as solar and wind has been in some areas, it's really hurting small hydro uh, because we're in those same categories. And that would also affect the small hydros in Tuolumne County, uh, which um, TUD is looking at purchasing from, from PG&E potentially. And then finally, protecting water rights is extremely important. Uh, we've already lost some as outside agencies have come in and uh, filed on them. We used to have 88 uh, cubic feet per second, now we're down to 60, but we wanna protect what we have. And so we have water for the future generations in Calaveras County. And that's gonna cost millions of dollars um, in order to do so. And so we need the community's help to understand uh, what it takes to maintain these systems, stay in compliance with the federal and state regulatory bodies and support us. And so my, my last slide is how can you help as a community member? And this goes for Tuolumne County too. I think it's really important to understand where your water comes from, where it's going and what it takes to bring it to the community. Don't just turn your tap on and, and just uh, you know, take that for granted. There's a lot behind that that's really important. And then also, um, you know, on your water bill, your, your companies may ask you to pay more. I, make sure that you take the time to understand why they're asking you to pay more. Where's that money going? And does it make sense? Is it going to protect water rights? And is it necessary? And I think it's our job as, as public leaders to educate people and answer the tough questions and make sure that everyone's informed. And if you wouldn't mind, if you learned something new tonight, share it with a friend. 
um, tell this story. I'm trying to, um, you know, come out from our shell and really get the word out about what it takes to manage water in this community. And so one of the things that we've done is we've rebranded ourselves. Um, we did a new website, uticawater.com. I encourage you to go visit it. It's a great website with lots of info. Our Facebook page is really cool. You can see lots of neat photos there and get updates on what's going on. And we're looking to give presentations wherever we can to help educate the community. So if anyone has any ideas of other groups that might benefit from learning about water in Calaveras County, please let me know. Uh, I would love the opportunity to, to go and, and share this with other folks. So with that, that's the end of my presentation. If you have any questions, um, ask them now, certainly, but you can also take my email down there and uh, that's my uh, office number as well. And you can reach out to me anytime. So with that, Debbie, I'm happy to answer any questions anyone has.